Everybody, how are we doing this morning uh, or this afternoon? Just turned um, into the afternoon. I am really excited about what I'm going to talk about today. This is something that I have been really passionate about for a very long time. And when it comes to your short term rental property, um, your properties, or your small business, or your big business, even. There is a big move and has been, let me just switch that off, to ensuring that we contribute to keeping the planet how we took it over. <laughs> and obviously, we haven't done a great job, have we? Let's be fair. Um, now, just to be sure, I am not going to be talking about climate change. Um, I've done a huge amount of research and I don't really buy into that. But what I really do buy into is the fact that I'd like to go swimming in the sea and not have a plastic bag bobbling by. I'd like to be able to go and see animals in their natural habitat in, you know, jungles and all of those kind of things. And I feel really fortunate. I've seen some absolutely incredible places around the world and I'd like my kids and my grandkids and all of those kind of people um, to to see that too. So that's where I think where I come from, where I really love to be sustainable basically. Um, if I could grow all my food, I would. In fact, I'd really like to get a pig, but I'm not sure we're gonna fit it in the garden, but you never know. Um, so yeah, so this is all about how can we keep our serviced accommodation or short-term rental property and business because remember it is actually a, a hospitality business um, and how we can make it more sustainable more eco um, to move forward um, this has also sort of been prompted a little bit as well there's been a big move by booking.com i don't know if anyone's seen it that they have started and I've got written down so I get the right wording here so they already have something called sustainability practices and if you fill out those forms I'm actually going to share my screen in a minute so that we can have a look at it but when you have sustainability practices you get these little green leaves and you can have one leaf two leaf three leaf leaves um, and that kind of shows how they consider you to be sustainable. Um, so that's pretty important. But on the 25th of March, they are bringing in this kind of educational program. So you can get certification, educational program. And they're really, really pushing this. Um, and it's, um, yeah, it's called the travel sustainable uh, levels that they give you with this, with the um, with the leaves. But then also you can go off and get certification. And there are, are other places where you can go and get green certification. There's something called Green Gauge. I've been a certified member of them before. But obviously, generally, for, for if you've only got one or two properties, um, it might be quite expensive to do that. So it is something, though, that I believe, you know, the big players should do. Um, if if they can and if it is a sustainable practice. So, yeah, what I'm going to do is have a quick look here at booking.com. So let me just see. So I'm going to share my screen. So there we go. Yeah. So hopefully we can all see that. Perfect. So what we're looking at here is just literally this is Ashford. And you can see here that the number one property and for some reason, I think booking.com are playing around. It would only allow me to put in dates. Normally, I don't put in any dates, but you can see here. So Hampton by Hilton has three of these travel sustainable leaves and they've got a three plus level. So that's pretty good. But what I'm really surprised about is when you kind of scroll down, the Ashford International has only got one. Holiday Inn has got none. Uh, another one, none. 
Um, you know, these these spa ones, it's all about nature and natural. I kind of anticipated that they would have at least two or three and they've got none. And then we start looking at um, local businesses. Um, so this person has bothered to put some sustainability in there. That's one. These guys were Bamboo Lodge. You would hope that, you know, maybe they would have, but they've got two. These guys haven't filled it out. These ones, I know these guys very well. It's a really lovely place. They've got three. But again, none, 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 none. Um, these guys here, well, that's me. <laughs> so, of course, we've got a three, three leaf sustainable. Um, I'm really, really key on that. Um, and then as you go through, so as you can see, hardly anyone... So even a shepherd's hut. So you would have thought they'd just be jumping on this. Um, it must be pretty sustainable being in a shepherd's hut. Um, so there's really very few people that are sort of taking this on board and really running with it. Um, so I think it's, you know, it's something that is really key. And then, so if I put that down here and stop sharing for one moment. And then I'm actually going to show you in the back office how you can actually um, find this. So let's have a quick look. I will share again just so that it's nice and practical what we're doing. So I'm hoping, yeah, that this is the one that we're going to be looking at. OK, so can you see here? So you basically this is your back office and you go into property. And if you go to the bottom, you've got sustainable practices. Um, and then all the way through, you go through and obviously you've got to tell the truth what you do, what you don't do. And they look at, you know, reducing waste management. So actually, sometimes it gives you really good ideas. It's like quite cripes. I don't do that yet. So like participation in a soap donation program. I do not do that yet. Um, I'm not sure how I would. Um, we don't really waste anything in our single use plastic. I mean, I should just hope that nobody does that. Reduce and manage water use. So obviously, if you're doing a rent to rent, you might not be able to deal with that. But having said that, uh, the rent to, uh, one of my rent to rents has a barrel in the garden and we're going to use that to water the plants in the summer. Um, so there's things like that. Reduce energy and greenhouse gases. So it looks at all of those things that you might be able to do. Promote safety, equity and culture in your local community. Um, reduce impact on the natural environment. So you can see that there's a whole uh, section here all about being able to keep your, um, yeah, reducing it. Now I'm going to see if I just go to there. No, that doesn't let me do that. So I'm now just going to stop sharing that and show you their yeah their new sustainability that they are bringing out in the so you can see 25th of march we're adapting um this whole pushing people towards this certification um and education um and so if we go into will it stay into that yeah so you can go in and look at that and it really gives you lots and lots of information on how they, you know, how they're encouraging you. And it looks like lots of, um, you know, places where you can go and learn stuff and things like that. So I think it's pretty, pretty handy. Um, so if anyone has seen that, um, maybe you can put a, a yes seen that in the chat or no, that's new to me. It'd be good to see um, those of you who are watching um, whether this is new. Um, so yeah, let, let me know. And then now what I'm going to do is really talk through what I've done in my business to help my property and not just my property, but my actual business be more sustainable. Me uh, be able to feel that I'm not making a major impact on the footprint of the of the earth, so to speak, so that our grandkids can walk in the forest with orangutans. I mean, that's the kind of thing we think of, don't we? Um, so that's where we're going. So how does it all start then? So I believe it all really starts with your branding. And that was a huge thing for me. 
Um, and before I even set up my first uh, rent to rent all those years ago, I started off thinking through exactly what I wanted to offer. Um, and I'm going through this at the moment uh, with some of my mentees. And it's really interesting. I'm asking them, look, really think about what it is that you represent what do you love i mean do you love sport do you love food do you love the environment what is it that you really really love and that's what i did all those years ago and for me uh, i felt quite passionate about the environment and being able to leave a tidy footprint behind when i have been in this world so you know not being wasteful um and i'm also really keen to feed my kids really healthy foods all of those kind of things um so that was the first one it was all about being eco but what was really interesting in the formation of being eco I also was a full time mum, I still am, and I didn't have a lot of time. So it really became apparent that I needed to use a lot of technology as well to save me time. But what interested me the most was actually the technology also made that business even more eco friendly. Um, so, yeah, so that's really, really interesting. We'll go through it a bit more as to how you can sort of move the technology to making you much more eco-friendly as well. So I've got a few uh, titles here. So I've got property features. Uh, I've got um, uh, high tech. I've got supply chain. I've got how a small business can be sustainable and also all about engaging your guests. So we shall go through those um, one by one. And if you've got any questions, do chuck them into the chat. Um, and uh, so either put them below and I can either answer them now or I can come back afterwards and answer them as well. So let's get into it. So property. So you've found a property. Now it may be that you are actually developing that property. So I've been really fortunate. I was able to develop a 16 studio apartment and I made it into a hotel. So I literally had, oh, it was actually 17 rooms, but 16, you know, rooms with a front door where I was able to design how we were going to do this. And absolutely everything that we looked at it was kind of like, OK, can we have a more sustainable approach to that? How could we do that where it would make it better? What materials could we use to make it better? Um, and one of the things that we came across was how are we going to heat this place? Now, we literally went back to brick. Uh, so everything was ripped out, which is a really interesting point to be at. And we heard about um, infrared. So I don't know if anyone's heard of infrared. We used a company called iHelios, uh, really fantastic. And they're not just infrared, they have loads more uh, tech based, um, you know, solutions to being uh, more kind of tech, but also it results in being more eco. So when I looked at the infrared stuff, it was kind of like one, it was like a bit scary. Do we want to really go with something that's really new? Um, and I'm not a big fan of some of taking a, a big leap on something that is, you know, a huge amount of money and would be very difficult to change. However, when we did a lot of research, there was actually a lady two, if you can believe it, like two or three roads up and she had an HMO and she had put uh, this exact brand of infrared in her HMO over a year before. So she already had a full year. Um, she'd already seen as if there's anything had gone wrong. So we popped round and it was really interesting. <laughs> we loved it. It was kind of like standing there. And infrared, I don't know if you know, it only heats you. It doesn't heat um, the, the room. So whereas normal convection heating, it heats the air and it kind of the air rises and the cold air drops and it's heats and you know it's a, a cyclic cyclical thing um which is okay but it can affect people with asthma because you have dust moving around all the time you can get black mold if if the if the air isn't moving properly so there can be some negatives of it um but with infrared you didn't have any of that it's great for your health um, you're literally only heating the things in the room so just like you <laughs> it's an odd kind a sensation as well so if you imagine it if you're walking down a road and it's really you know those really fresh frosty mornings and you're behind a hedge 
Um, and so you're a bit chilly, aren't you? And then you come out of the hedge and the sun is blazing at you. And suddenly you feel really warm, don't you? Well, that's kind of what infrared feels like. So it's kind of it can be cold around you, but you still feel really warm. Um, not saying that it is cold, but you understand the concept. So that was um, a really interesting one for us. So look at all those different options. You know, is there something different that you can do? Um, and then, uh, yeah, alongside that, that then brought on other things such as um, light switches, how we're going to control the heating. So if you just have like a, you know, a single um, rent to rent property, you might want to look at Hive or Nest or something like that. And then if people leave the house, you can either manually turn it down or alternatively, you can actually have a schedule. So, you know, generally people have left the house by, you know, 8.30 and, at, you know, 8.15, you can turn the heat down to a reasonable heat, obviously. <laughs> I don't want to get, come back and the, and the milk on the side would be frozen. Um, but equally, you know, some people, if anyone are experienced with the uh, service accommodation, they're really happy to crank up the heat, um, open all the windows so that they're not too hot, but their their washing is dried. And that's not particularly uh, environmentally friendly, is it? Um, so, yeah, so it's really great to have these control me mechanisms um, that can um, look after that. So, yeah, really have a look at absolutely everything. So in our hotel, we actually used... Um, uh, uh what they called scaffolding boards and we use those for nearly everything so one they were cheap they were hugely durable and they look fantastic so we actually made these enormous um headboards so again this is another point i'm going to come to later is to make things really um multiple uses as well but yeah we used all these different um materials to keep things uh, you know really really at a, at a good cost and also we looked at uh with your your sort of design and what you're going to use there are actually a lot of like end of use so all of our doors actually all of our bathroom doors they were coming to the end of the cycle they weren't going to be used anymore um and it just so happened that there was enough for us to use them in all of our bathrooms so that's another way not only being sustainable but also saving a bit of money as well let's be fair in any development is where we want to be um so yeah so that's good so then having a look and thinking about uh con conserving water So let's think about that. So obviously, if you can do any kind of, you can sometimes get sheds that have specific um, reduction in the the flow, but it's still a, a great shower. We do we do not want to make a really trickle, tiny trickle coming out. Um, but you know, if you, you can also get special taps that don't have drips, you know, they don't allow drips, and these are not expensive things to help out. Um, also, if you're installing new loos, you know, things like dual flush, any way of sort of controlling what might go out is <coughs> is really important. And then if you've got a garden, as I mentioned earlier, you might have a water bowser which collects water, which can be used to, you know, water plants. Um, and yeah, to do, to do those kind of things, I think is really key. And it may, it may be that you use that water to wash the patio or I don't know, you'll, you'll be really creative. <laughs> wash a car I wouldn't wash a car get your kids to do that that's a much better idea um so yeah you can look at all of those kind of things um and then also when you are looking at furnishing these places so especially with your rent to rent essay you're not necessarily going to be able to change um the you know the loo you're not necessarily going to be able to change the entire heating system you know you are what you you get but that's where things like nest and all of those kind of things come in but also ensuring that you use led lights um that you really look around the place and think well how what can i do can you ensure that you know you have I don't know, really re, uh, using sort of bamboo um, chopping boards that, that are also really healthy as far as um, uh, uh, what you call it, like antibacterial. They're really, really good. Um, and it's looking at all those different things. Can you perhaps use um, secondhand furniture? Now, obviously, 
please be very, very careful. You must check the fire safety on those. And in fact, there are some companies that will make secondhand furniture fire safety, fire safe. But of course, again, you want to be checking out on your costs as well. You are a business, you do need to make money. But all of these things are really, really interesting. Um, you could be looking at, you might do some painting, you might want to use non-toxic paints, but at the same time, you might want to be using really, really durable um, paints, maybe pay a little bit more so that you only have to update and, and you know, uh, renew the paint less frequently. Um, so you're using less uh, resources, so to speak. So that's a, a really, really great idea. Um, and I think re being really durable. So I'm not a fan at all. I <laughs> know this is a bit, you know, lots of people use um, uh, wallpaper, which is great. Um, and, I, and I think that can be fine. For me personally, I'm not a fan. I think you can do a lot with paint. And at least if you've got paint, you can touch it up. So I think that works um, for me personally. That works really, really well. But as soon as you've got a notch in a bit of wallpaper, that can be um, not look that great. Um, but on top of that, you can actually get these incredible. And we did look at it for our hotel. You can get these like non-rip uh, wallpaper so again that could be an option i think they understand that they are quite a bit more expensive so again you want to be working out um, what works for you what doesn't work for you um, and then as far as your furniture goes um, i think it's really key to think about how many um how many activities can a piece of furniture do? So for instance, if you can have it having multiple uses, you can really have an impact on everything that you are using. So I always kind of think, well, do I really need that? Is that really important? Or what else can I use with that? So for instance, with a sofa in my very first um, SA units, I had this big sofa. So one thing, it was a sofa. Obviously, people sat their bums on it. That was great. Two, it was actually really sizable and it was a statement piece. So when you walked into the living room, it was like, wow, you know, this looks really welcoming. It's, you know, it's not just a piddly little sofa in the corner. It looks really comfortable. I really, really like that. Then on top of that, it wasn't just a sofa. It was a sofa bed. Um, and even more than that, uh, it was modular. So you could actually have a king bed or you could have two singles with one single model module in between. So you could have it as two singles and you could have it as, um, as a king. Then on top of that, every single, and this was an Ikea one, by the way, they don't do it anymore. Um, every single element of this sofa could be replaced. So um, I had a spare set of covers for it. So we did have one particular occasion where I don't know what somebody did, but it really kind of stained. It, it actually like dyed it. <laughs> um, and it was so easy rather than replacing the entire sofa or having a really rubbish looking sofa for a while. I literally just changed one um, one cover. I think it was like 15 quid, 20 quid. I don't know. I can't remember, but not a lot of money, not the equivalent of a sofa, which is a massive cost to you, isn't it? So that was incredibly useful. Um, and then what else with that sofa? So, yeah, so that, as you can see that. Oh, and then the final thing was um, it also had storage inside the sofa. So it was just this one thing that had multiple, multiple uses. So I didn't have to buy, you know, another thing to store things in and another thing to do this and this and this. It was just looking at what I can do to multi-use. And I'm not a fan of um, wardrobes because I think they're just absolute dust catches. <laughs> but um, I did when I very first started out, I used it rather than buying a mirror, I bought a wardrobe where one of the doors was a mirror. So again, it was kind of multifunctional having all of these things. Um, and then things like um, a desk, 
it was kind of uh, what is it what materials am I using so what can we use that can be recycled so initially I used to use as I say love a bit of a scaffolding board me um so using scaffolding boards and you can just buy those wire legs and again really simple not very expensive um you can literally make it yourself if you're a bit handy um and you you will obviously want to sand things down and make sure that they're safe and everything like that but that is pretty handy so always be looking at all these different things and then when you're looking at your what you have in the drawers in the cupboards you know please I just think it's really lazy to have anything plastic nowadays. There's just no need for it. Um, I, you know, there's especially now bamboo is so reasonable, you know, so even things like where you store your knives and forks, you know, get a bamboo um, holder and then think about it. Well, what is what am I providing for everyone? And I would highly advise you to give them enough but not too much um i know i went to a <laughs> holiday let before christmas it must have been their house i mean they literally had everything um I, you know there was like a whisk and oh gosh they literally had everything which was great but it was too much and it made me twitch because there was just too much cleaning the pool cleaner must have taken them about 20 hours to clean it so really think about all the things that you've got in there um, I, as again, I'm a huge fan of uh, wooden or, um, or bamboo chopping boards. Some people don't like that. They think they're not hygienic, but I think the, the bamboo are. And then just look through everything. I don't give any cellophane. <laughs> I might give them um, foil. But what I do do is I have um, oven to table, uh, you know, cookware. Um, so again, it's it's just more of a single use. So it's you know what I mean. It's, so it looks quite nice the the um, the items that you cook in, and you can just put it straight to the table. I also IKEA do these really fantastic kind of glass um, bowls, and then they have a bamboo top to them. So rather than wanting to always get cellophane out, they can literally put their used food into that and put the the um, the bamboo lid on top. And then you don't have any kind of those single uses. Um, and then I always encourage, um, you know, using really good kind of cleaning products. So I leave our washing up liquid is an eco washing up liquid. Um, so and some people actually you can get quite differing eco washing up liquids. Some of them are like water. So I have had people saying, oh, you've just given me water. I clearly didn't. So just be really aware of which one you use and whether it seems like a normal one. Um, so that's pretty important. And then also I always leave one or two dishwasher tablets and one or two washing machine tablets, because obviously if you arrive, you haven't necessarily bought those things with you. But I'm not necessarily going to provide them with, you know, two weeks worth of, of those kind of things. And those I always use are really eco as well. So you may want to think of, you know, uh, I'm going to talk about this later, but, uh, you know, any eco tabs or anything like that. Um, and also reducing packaging um, is really key with that. So look, thinking through the kitchen, I'm just thinking of all those other things um, of what you can do. And yeah, and even things like uh, if you're really creative, um, paintings on the wall. So I've had um, I've had properties that I'm doing, and literally the budget has been so tight that I've fat, gone to a local charity shop, <laughs> found you know those really beautiful old fashioned books where the pages are a bit um, you know they look like you've had tea bags all over them and it's oldie woldy writing, and then you can put just put them through the printer and put like a funny cartoon on it you know like two can play at that game and you've got a two can on it silly things like that and just put them in a in a you know cheap wooden frame um and that is something that again you're recycling things um to make it a bit more sustainable so that's obviously if you are creative you might not be creative i'm not particularly creative um but i have also even done um painted huge canvases um, to have that kind of color blocking that you want if you're not able to paint the actual walls to have some kind of feature wall you can get a big canvas and you can get um, what is it that filler because uh, it's not very good to have it well I was advised it's not very good to have, just have it flat and you can put uh, polyfiller all over it make funny crazy shapes 
um, and just paint over the top. And that, again, is just something a bit simple. Um, so, yeah, so really, really consider absolutely everything that you are putting into your property, um, whether it's from the design. Um, I always just really think through, could we do something else that is more environmentally friendly? What is it that we've got here um, and what how many uses could we make? with it can we use sort of other things with it um and i think that's you know it's it's really key and people really appreciate that and of course um having things like um your dustbins and labeling them now some are really people are really lazy um we can't we can't help that but as long as you have that offering you know your normal bin your recycling bin and if in your area they do a food bin then again, that's that's really key. And then you can uh, then sort of follow your local recycling rules. Um, and people really appreciate that. They want to know that they can do that. And I think it's especially true in the leisure market. I think the leisure market are looking more and more and are going to really appreciate booking.com doing these kind of adjustments to help people see if your property is um, eco-friendly. Um, so, yeah, I, I do find, if I'm honest, that my lovely contractor friends are not at all bothered. I'm sure that's not true, but <laughs> are not that bothered by eco. However, what you need to consider is the actual contractors who are coming to stay may not be so bothered. But what you really need to consider is the bigger companies. And obviously what we're looking for is not just those bookings from booking.com or Airbnb. We want to be converting those into bigger bookings. We want to be converting those into direct bookings. And it may be that you might get bookings through corporate online travel agents such as Situ, Silverdor, those kind of places. And more and more, these big companies are going to be looking at the sustainability of where they're sending it. So, you know, there's been lots of talk. Um, the bridge that goes under the Thames that's still not being built completely, but that was talking about being everyone involved in that has to be sustainable, you know, has to be environmentally friendly. They have to have a certain level of sustainability. So that could also mean because I was thinking, oh, that would be good. Um, would that also mean where these contractors are staying? Would they prefer to stay with people who show and go out of their way to be more sustainable? But I also definitely think that the leisure guests, that is really something that I would be looking at. Um, when I'm looking, I want to see that it's a, you know, it's a lovely property and I don't want to turn up and there be loads of single use plastic. I couldn't bear it if I turn up and there's lots of these tiny little plastic bottles. I just don't understand why anyone would do that anymore. anymore. It's just completely unnecessary, isn't it? I mean, it doesn't matter if you're eco or not. It's just an absolute waste. Um, so uh, get on my soapbox there. OK, so next up is looking at high tech. So we've had a look at good look at sort of property features. And now we're looking at technology. And it was quite a big adjustment for me and quite exciting to understand that technology can really massively impact how eco eco friendly and how sustainable you are as a business. Now, in fairness, I have to admit that it all started just through practicalities. You know, I'm a mum of three kids. And, you know, when I really first started out, it was there was a lot of, you know, you could you maybe want to turn up and, you know, meet and greet your guests because you could really get a lot more um, good reviews if you do that. I'm thinking, what? Are you joking me? You want me to rock up at four o'clock in the afternoon to collect, you know, to meet and greet somebody who's then delayed for two hours, doesn't let you know. Uh, uh, there was never going to be any of that. So I've always had this pact that my guests don't want to meet me and equally I don't want to meet them, but they want to feel really loved and I love them. But none of us want to meet each other. And certainly my kids, can you imagine? I'm sure some of you do. I'm stood there with three children all running around. And usually they don't want to have any kind of biscuits or anything. And Oh, my gosh. And then they try and climb into. Oh, it's happened. They try and climb into the beds and all of this. So, uh, yeah, for me, there was never going to be an opportunity of of meet and greet. And I'm not saying it's it's not something. 
can do. If it fits with you, then absolutely go for it. But for me, it was just not an option. Um, so what can you do? How can you how can your guests feel genuinely loved um, without actually having to um, meet and greet them? So there's multiple, multiple things. Gosh, that's that's for a whole nother <laughs> session. Um, but just, you know, obviously the the day of it, the the day of people of guests moving in. So I'm sure lots of us have got guests moving in today. Um, so, you know, give them a call, drop them a message and try and just make everything really convenient. So you they may have received their check in details, you know, a week ago, two weeks ago. And if they're anything like like me, I've lost that email. Now I've had a thousand emails since then. And I don't know where it is. So when somebody actually emails me today, and WhatsApps me or text messages me, I'm in love with them because that literally makes it so much easier for me. So really simple things. We can all do that, can't we? I mean, you know, unless you've got multiple, multiple properties at that point, you can actually engage either a channel manager who can do that for you or you can set up these, um, you know, free or low cost ways of messaging people in different platforms. Um, so that's a, a really good way of, um, of doing it. And then, of course, when they arrive. So what can you do with tech to make sure that the people who are arriving are who they say they are? And let's be fair, it's not 15, 18 year olds coming to have a party. Um, so what can you do there for tech? Um, so rather than you getting in your car, driving. And for me, my my SA units are 45 minutes away from my home. I live in the country. I don't live anywhere near anywhere um, where I want to. And, and for me, my target audience is contractors. So they're in towns and cities. So imagine the environmental impact of me getting in there, driving there, driving back, spending time, my time, all of that has a cost and an implication. So once they arrive at your property, you could have something like a ring camera. And ring cameras are fabulous because, you know, you can see them. So if they arrive and there's no issues, you can just see that there's just two people that have moved in or five people. You can also see if they're bringing their entire menagerie of animals, because if they have if you don't take animals, then, you know, that's really key for you to have a look at that and see what you can do to uh, yeah to cover the animals. So you can see all of that as well. Um, so there's lots of things that you want to check. And also, if they're having any problems, they can press on the button and you can speak to them directly. So how great is that? You don't have to do anything. You can speak to them directly. Another thing that I really am a huge fan of is um, uh, smart locks. Um, I have used and do sometimes occasionally use keys, but I'm not a big fan just because they can be lost so easily. And to change all your locks can be quite expensive. And if you forget to change the locks, it can be a problem. And yeah, so um, so yes, yeah, so you can have lock boxes and things like that. And that's perfectly fine. But what I really love is um, the smart locks. So, for instance, in our hotel, uh, and in uh, my service accommodation that I used to have, I was able to see when people, one, I could see them with the ring cam, but then I would get a readout that said this person entered at this time. And actually, guys, when you get some people that complain, you can actually manage to um, to uh, like show that they maybe aren't telling the truth. So I've had a few occasions where they said, oh, I arrived at this time and you, you know, I hadn't received this and I hadn't received that. And you can go, well, actually, I could see that you did arrive at this time and you went in the front door at this time. And they're a bit like, oh, OK. Um, so it's pretty good from that perspective as well. But I love I love um, door locks. And then on top of that, what I like, why I like them is, again, rather than me getting in the car and having to drive to let, for instance, the electrician in to do your pack testing or the plumber in to to check your your boiler or something's gone wrong um, or your handyman. Um, you can just let them in remotely. Um, and in fact, we've even shown people who want to have long term <laughs> bookings. We've shown them around remotely. So I'm literally on their phone on WhatsApp live um, and then I let them in the doors individually from afar. So that's pretty cool. Um, and I think that kind of thing is, yeah, is really amazing. So, yeah. So really think about um, 
all of those kind of things of what you can do. Um, and then, yes, I'm going to come to that other one later. And then you might want to think about sort of um, renewable energy sources. I'm a bit on the fence with that. There's so much that it takes to make solar panels. But anyway, those are definitely options, aren't they? So can you put in solar panels? Definitely look at water recycling, um, runoff water. Um, so there's so many things that you want to be really considering. Is it what can I do to to really make a difference in in my particular buildings and properties? And then the next one, and this is kind of like my favorite one, um, is looking at your supply chain. So where are you getting things and what are you using? Um, so I don't know, you might um, you might provide like a welcome pack. So if you've got leisure guests, you might provide a welcome pack. If you've got um, uh, contractors, you might provide, you know, tea, coffee, um, you know, you might provide milk, all of these kind of things. So what is it that you provide? Now, most people don't know, they go and they just use whatever it is, the most you know, the, the the cheapest, and you might have milks in those little plastic jars. Um, and actually, I found that really hard to find any alternatives for them at the moment, although there is a company that does these kind of, they're like pouches, you know, like the pouches that you put in a washing machine, they're like that, and they've got milk in them, but they have, I haven't seen that they've come out with that yet. But that to me is great. So it's made with a like a seaweed, and that and you just literally press it and then the milk comes out. But um, yeah, milk is a challenge. But tea, where do you get your tea from? I get it. I get my tea bags from a local tea company. Obviously, the tea comes from miles away, but they produce it um, and package and everything locally. And I use that local company. Uh, I think I think I use at the moment Kent and Sussex uh, Tea Company fantastic and then coffee so again i use um we uh in the hotel actually use coffee plungers i have in the past used bean to cup coffee machines and provided actual beans but again i use a local company so a local company who roasts the beans um and really you know support and all of them are really sustainable as well they are fair trade they really check who they work with. The firm, farmers at the other end are, you know, treated fairly. Um, and so that's that's really key. So where are you getting things from? And then I also in the summer add in much more. So once your prices start to go really high and you have got a lot of um competition um, you might be getting really high rates Um for the same thing that you offer at maybe half the price. So at that stage, I think it's really key to give additional things that perhaps don't cost that much. So you might give some biscuits, you might give chocolate, you might give wine, um, you might give, you know, all of those things. And again, you've got to be a bit careful with all of these things um, that you're not providing a, um, you know, off license or anything like that. But anyway, um, so yeah, can you find a local supplier? So I had a fantastic lady who used to make my biscuits. I don't know how she did it because they were very reasonable, but it was literally two little lovely biscuits um, and she just put them in a, a little cellophane package and the kids would eat them constantly. <laughs> but uh, but they were really great. And she did loads of stuff like that. So can you do that? Um, and then on top of that, I mean, we're going to talk about small business stuff a bit later. But, um, you know, I use local supplier for my team as well, who makes um, these incredible hampers for Christmas, birthdays, um, and I used to be really creative, but they just love the hampers now. So they always get a hamper. Um, and um, yeah, and that's really supporting your sort of local community, the local. Um, yeah. And I think things like that. And also, don't forget, when you're building up those kind of relationships, they can be your marketing team as well, can't they? If they know about you, that's really key. And then just think really creatively, what else can I do? Jams. Like everyone tends to go for the same old jam. Um, but, you know, is there a local provider who can do you sort of mini jams or, yeah, just really think about all of those things. Um, what else do we have? Yeah. And things like sugar. I actually use those sugar, um, 
like it's a glass container you know the one that's got like a tube so you kind of tip it up and it comes out because obviously you don't want to be giving like a bowl of sugar because people put their fingers in that's not very hygienic but like but equally i don't want to be giving you know paper more paper with a single shot of sugar in it again to me that seems quite wasteful so we we have it where we can refill it um and do all of those kind of things and then also can you do where do you do your soaps and hair washes and all of those things so we've already mentioned haven't we having different um uh the little bottles please don't use those i just think they're so wasteful um, so what can you do? Well, you can get like three in one. So you can get face wash, hand wash, shampoo in one. Um, and that's what we do. And then we actually have aluminium. No, we don't now. We don't now do that. We used to do that. Oh, I've got one property that still has that in. But we just use normal ceramic, you know, pump lids that we just fill that up with the three in one. Uh, I don't provide conditioner, but they have got you know, those three things in one that they can use. Um, and I think, you know, and again, what what are you going to use? So we get those big, like five litre jerry cans with a pump um, and then we just fill them up. So that means that we're buying in bulk. We're kind of, you know, saving on plastics and all of those kind of things. And then can you reuse those jerry cans? I do see a lot of really creative things where people use them in their gardens to make pots and things. I haven't done that, I must admit. But you can recycle them. So that's pretty useful. Um, so, yeah, so supply chain. Um, let me just see what. Oh, yeah. So also looking at kind of regular deliveries. So um, I don't know, there's companies like Small, S-M-O-L, that do regular deliveries. So you know, as a service accommodation, how much you tend to use. So you might need a delivery every two weeks, every three months, whatever it might be. Um, then also things like, and, and so that you um, aren't doing lots of individual things. And like Amazon now, don't they? They ask you, would you like it tomorrow? Or are you happy to have it in two more days? And then we'll only send one box. So thinking about all of those kind of things, not just for your business, but also for you personally, they can just make a little bit of a difference, can't they? Um, and I do think sort of online ordering um, rather than, well, certainly for me, driving, you know, 40 minutes before I can get anywhere and then and let's be fair, everywhere seems to be out of stock when I go to the shop or the shop is shut. How many times have you done that? This is so frustrating. Um, so, yeah, so think about things like that and think about everything that you provide them. So loo paper, what loo paper do you use? Is it a sustainable loo paper? You know, you can get bamboo loo papers. I know there's loads now. Um, we really like who gives a crap, um, which is a loo paper, by the way. But you can. Um, there's so many of them now. And just we're just all constantly doing price comparisons um, and what you can do, you know, your um uh, what do you call it, like kitchen roll. So just think about everything that you provide, you know, can I make it more environmentally, more sustainable um, and taking it through that. So, yeah, so again, looking at the products, fair trade and talk about it, guys. So we talked about branding at the beginning on my website. Um, you know, we talk about all the products that we use um, and we show that we really consider what it is that uh, that we talk about, um, you know, that we that we offer our, our guests. And I, I like to be not just environmentally friendly, but I also like it to be natural, a bit more natural, um, you know, because there's so many toxics, toxins out there um, that aren't necessarily great. So <laughs> there. So next one we're going to talk about. So we've talked about uh, property, fee the features in your property. We'll talk about technology. Uh, we've talked a bit about supply chain. Um, and now we're going to talk about, you know, in your small business. So remember, you literally are running a small business. Some people just go, oh, it's a bit of a property thing. But whether you've got property, whether it's serviced accommodation, whether it's HMOs, whether it's buy to let, it's still a business and treat it as such. And what can you do 
at home. So this is my home office. <laughs> this is uh, where I work some of the time. Some of the time, I have to admit, I do work at the kitchen table as well. Depends what I'm feeling like, whether I want to be official or whether I want to be a bit more um, kind of warmy. Um, so yeah, consider, you know, if you have got staff where they work, um, I have UK staff, but no, we've never had you know, we don't have an office or anything like that. Uh, a lot of the time we might meet at the hotel, things like that. But then I also have a team um, in uh, in uh, the Philippines. Um, so again, uh, you're totally used to using lots of technology and, and things like that. But think about, are you paperless? Um, now, obviously, there are some occasions where you have to use paper, but pretty much, uh, I don't know if anyone else uses this, but I'm a huge fan. It's called a Remarkable, and pretty much all of my paperwork goes on here. I do have to admit, I do still have a daily. I call it my daily. Um, and yeah, I, I do still admit that I do use this, but this uh, is lasts me for three months at a time, so 90 days. Uh, but this is massive, massive saving on things like printing out. So every time I do a meeting, I just look in here. Um, so these are my notes, obviously, for today. So normally, you know, in the, in the past, it would have been a, you know, a, a piece of paper um, with loads of notes written on it. And then I would have just thrown it away afterwards or stored it and then never looked at it ever again. You know, I've still got folders up, up here. So, yeah, really consider how else you might go sort of paperless um because there's just there's just no need is there it really frustrates me how you know still even some of the banks solicitors all of these things uh, insurance companies oh my gosh they drive me nuts i specifically ask them not to send me millions of sheets of paper just telling me that i need to renew i mean i don't really care i don't want to look at them um so really ask to work with people who will invoice you not through a paper copy. So I know my jam company <laughs> for ages, they just wanted to send paper copies. And I said to them, I just don't want a paper copy. Please don't send it to me. Um, and again, you know, that slowly they changed and, you know, and then they, they decided to send it, um, you know, in a, you know, via email, which again, you can then with the cloud, you can still, you're still storing these things. You can still have really fantastic accounts. You can have good storage. Um, but just thinking about that as well. Um, and then another thing within the, um, uh, within your properties. So do you have um, paper kind of like where to go? You know, how how does the bath work? Where, you know, where are the local things? Please don't have that. You really don't need to have that. So there's so many online guides now and they're really interactive and some of them you can monetize as well. So if you send them to the local curry house, they might give them a, a discount or they might give you, a, you know, if they book they know that you the, that you've sent them. They might give you a you know kickback or something, but so much better. Everyone now is so happy to look at guidebooks on here, um, and then you know, and then you can literally jump in your car or walk. Um, and do encourage everyone to know in your property where the nearest bus station is, or whether they can cycle, or whether you know, all of these kind of things are just really, really, really helpful. Um, and it gives that really kind of, yeah, sustainable thing. And obviously within your businesses, look at all the tech that there is. I'm really fortunate to work with a, a virtual assistant in the Philippines and that's their kind of job. But if you haven't already heard, use things like Trello, Asana, Slack, uh, CRM systems, the customer relationship management systems. They can save so much on um, paper and all of those kind of things. And they make your life so much easier. Um, they're really key and really important. So do look at those as well. Um, let me just see. Um, yeah, and obviously people that you work with. So it's really key. Like who is your linen company? Are they, do they have eco credentials? That is so key. Um, or, you know, even our, um, our dry cleaning company where we actually t send our duvets so we go and have our duvets washed every 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 so every you know specific timing um and they've they've got really great green credentials they're spe really specific the products that they use um so have a look at that and also they're local 
Um, so we use we use them and we support them locally. You know, your cleaners, what products do they use? So we are really specific. We'll only use cleaners that use, um, you know, decent. And you can get really good industrial, you know, cleaning products now that come from a, a green background. Um, so have a look at those. And then a big one is maybe you'd like to ta you'd like to donate a, a percentage of your profits to um, a charity or to a sustainable practice or to something like that. That's a really nice idea. Um, and one of the things that we love, and I'm sure there's more now, but something called Ecosia, E-C-O-S-I-A. And that is um, like a it's like a search engine. And every time you search a some certain number of searches, they plant a tree. Like if if everyone is not using that, you so should be. Why wouldn't you just incorporate that into your uh, daily activity? So whenever literally I'm on here and I'm on here via Ecosia. So it means that every time I, I come on and open a new like um, page, my technology is going. Um, it contributes to planting a tree. I mean, that's just fab. Why doesn't everyone do that? It just should be part of everything. Tell everyone to do that. It, it's, you know, it's just a, a great thing that every time you're just literally working, you're contributing to having trees planted. Um, and I think it's really good to talk to young kids about this because I literally found out about that on a train one time with, and there were some people opposite and they, I can't remember what they were chatting. Anyway, we started talking and I asked them what they were doing. Um, and they were into sustainability, their business, their work. And so I said, oh, I'd love, you know, what kind of things do you suggest? And they came up with all these different ideas. And one of them was Ecosia. Um, and I just think, yeah, that's that's really amazing. And then finally, it's, you know, do really engage your guests tell them exactly what you do and it might be in your welcome thing you know you ask them to be really careful to to do the recycling um you know we, we're really wanting to contribute to, you know tell them if they have got muddy boots for instance they've just come from the um you know from the the development site that they can use the the barrel outside um, to wash their boots you might want to leave them a, a brush there or something all of these kind of things I don't know that's maybe a crazy idea but you could also maybe incentivize them so it may be that you offer them something I don't know but it, all of these kind of things it's so important to let them know and I definitely have it I would be you know I hope as you are building a brand and you are talking on social media that you talk about all of these things sort of start incorporating that into the way you chat the way you have it so that everyone knows um, what you do um, you can get accreditations as we've spoken about but you could also maybe um, apply to win some awards I mean I I won and I'm sure it's just because of my branding I won three awards and they weren't the awards where you had to um, ask to um to be nominated and then get all your mates to vote for you there was none of that it was literally i was chosen and i won um and I, I didn't even know about it until i was you know given the call that that you'd won and then i'd just been nominated for another one and it's not one where you you um you know you get everyone to vote but maybe you know if you've got lots of friends and you can get people to vote for you then go and get that because that will show that you you know if you can get these awards for being green or awards for this um again it gives that credibility um of, of you know who you are and, and what you do and um yeah and and make it around there so oh, i think i hope that was kind of helpful drink but I think it's really key to, you know, consider your branding, consider what it is that makes your business your business. But on top of that, every step of the way, we all want to leave the world um, the same as kind of we found it. We want to be surrounded by green. It's just nature. It's what we need. We want our kids to be able to go to outer Mongolia and see you know, amazing things, see gorillas in, in forests and mountains and all of those kind of things. So just by us keeping our own businesses tidy, I just think it's tidy. It's just not being wasteful. You wouldn't waste, you know, you don't want to waste things. Um, so, you know, think about 
all of those things that you can do, not just in your business, but also at home. We've got a fantastic new uh, shop near us where you can refill everything. And I love it. <laughs> I go, my kids think I'm mad, but I love it. Um, so, you know, all of these little things that we can do just to ensure that we can leave um, a positive footprint uh, behind us um, rather than just devastation, um, because I certainly don't want to be swimming in the sea and having plastic bags coming past me. You know, I want to see it in a in its beautiful state as it is. So I hope that was helpful. Um, really, thank you for joining us. Um, I'm back again next week. I believe. Yes, I know we're going into Easter, so I will take a week or so off. Um, although I might not. I don't know because I had to take a week off um, the other time. But anyway, I shall be back. Um, so always come and search for me Monday at noon till one o'clock where we cover off various things from um, yeah, various property things. Um, and if you've got any questions or you need any help, then do let me know. I do do st uh, free strategy calls. And obviously, if you really stuck and you don't know, um, you need a bit of support and hand holding through mentoring, then do let me know because I help people there as well. So thank you so much, guys. See you next time. Take care.